Imagine a day when you could tame an illuminescent green and black butterfly in your own backyard in Brisbane. Having a light on your hand when holding a flower or offering nectar and seeing the incredible detail of the wing. A butterfly so well adapted to its environment that even the slightest change would result in the loss of such an incredible species. Unfortunately, this is a situation that has occurred and a problem which we are now tackling in order to preserve the biodiversity of Australian forests. Biodiversity is the whole spectrum of species, their genetics, the ecosystems they live in and the interactions that occur. Preserving biodiversity has implications for sustaining living networks and the services they provide to the earth and its inhabitants. One of Australia's largest subtropical butterflies, the Ornithoptera richmondia, commonly known as the Richmond birdwing butterfly, has sadly become a threatened species. This butterfly species lays eggs in small clusters on the lowland Richmond birdwing vine. Over time, the butterfly and its vines have co-evolved such that the larvae can only feed on these two species and relies on them to complete their development to the pupil stage. One of the major threats to the Richmond birdwing butterfly is the introduction of exotic species, particularly Aristolochia elegans, known as the Dutchman's pipe vine. A species of vine which was introduced from South America in the 1800s and has had a major impact on our natural ecosystems. The Dutchman's pipe vine has the ability to trick the butterfly into laying its eggs on its leaves. This is a huge problem as the Dutchman's pipe vine's leaves are actually toxic to a number of organisms, including the Richmond birdwing butterfly. The introduction of the Dutchman's pipe vine is not the only problem faced by the butterfly larvae's main food source. Clearing of much of the butterfly's natural habitat for farmland and urbanisation in southern Queensland and northern New South Wales has had a great impact on the native plant, only to be exacerbated by climate change, fire and extensive periods of drought. With all these changes combined, it is no wonder that the plant is unable to adapt quickly enough to survive and maintain its range, which is affecting the butterfly's environmental distribution. It was quite clear by about the 1920s that the uh, distribution and the abundance of the birdwing were changing. And some of the early literature by Roland Illidge, who was an early biologist, showed that birdwings were disappearing from the vicinity of Brisbane. Originally, the Richmond birdwing butterfly was spread along the east coast subtropical areas in Australia. The region spread from Maryborough in southeast Queensland to Grafton in New South Wales. However, over time, the distribution significantly reduced, leaving fragmented patches of the population in small area. And to make it even worse, the fragmentation of habitats limits the amount of butterflies overposting and metamorphosing in one area, leading to a reduced chance of survival due to interbreeding. The only way you can address inbreeding depression in any animal or plant is by connectivity and by restoring corridors, even if it's only in a very fragmented way, it's got a better chance then of allowing organisms to move between their breeding habitats. And currently, projects exist which aim to do just that. In 1989, the Richmond Birdwing Conservation Project was developed by Dr Don Sands and New South Wales Parks Ranger Bob Moffat. This project worked closely with nurseries, communities and the CSIRO Double Helix Club Schools project to tackle the threats faced by the Richmond Birdwing butterfly. The participation of individuals and the education of communities about the plight of this local endangered species is essential to the success of this recovery effort. Fine trellises such as this one in Brookfield aim to act as stepping stones between butterfly communities, encouraging the spread of the Richmond Birdwing butterfly to new areas. A coordinated corridor program is currently underway to develop a 50-year plan to reconnect suitable habitats through the planting of more trellis sites. In addition to this, the David Flay Wildlife Park is carrying out experimental trials to determine the success of captive breeding programs. But there is still so much that we don't know about the threatening processes affecting the birdwing and its host vine. Until increased government and community support allows for further studies, the unknown will continue to hinder the fight for the survival of the Richmond birdwing butterfly. The many-faceted approach that has been undertaken to protect and re-establish this butterfly demonstrates how varied the threats are to native flora and fauna, with habitat loss and introduced species having a devastating effect on the biodiversity of Australian ecosystems. The future of it, I think, is going to depend really on people continuing their interest. For young people in particular, taking a kind of ownership and saying, this is my threatened species. I don't want what happened to the Tasmanian tiger happening with the Richmond birdwing. So 
so that you have your say as well as young people in conserving the species.